Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to answer John Gunzel's question here. And what it was in particular, let me go to his page. He's got a big menu bar across here at the top, and as we pull this down and we go into a mobile view, what we're going to see is the uh, navigation turns into this hamburger bun, but he also wanted the word menu on the page. So this is a headline element, and what he really wanted is when you click on the headline element, it basically simulates clicking on the hamburger bun, which opens up the navigation in mobile view. So I had to figure out how to not only best build this out, but then also be able to uh, have the word menu show up in here, but only on mobile. So let me open this back up a little bit further and show you what that looks like. So here is my resulting page. And let's just reload this page. And you're going to see I got boxes around here. And I'll explain to you in a minute why I have the boxes around here. But as we pull this down and we get smaller, we have now the word menu. And then we also have the hamburger bun. So if we click on the hamburger bun, it opens up the navigation like you would think. But also when we click on menu, it will also open up the navigation. And again, you'll see in a second here why I have those boxes around here. So let's go into our... Um, into the builder here into the editor and I'll kind of build this out real quickly from scratch and so we're just going to add in a section inside of this section we are going to put in a singular flex container and then what I like to do just because otherwise you can't really see where the flex containers are what I like to do is come in here and just come down to the bottom and turn on the border that way we can see the border around the uh, around the uh, flex container and you know exactly where it is other things I like to do right away is I want to turn this to no wrap there as well. And also we want the direction to be um, the uh, a row, not a column. So we want to leave that set right there. And that's it for this one for right now. Then we're going to come into here to add a new element. And we want to come over here, click on flex because we want to put another flex element inside of here. We will do that. Again, we can't see the element. So we're going to come down and put a border around it. We're also going to flip this over here to no wrap. No wrap is actually the default inside of ClickFunnels. It's an error and they're showing wrap as the default. It should be no wrap is the default for this element. And then again, we're going to just leave this one alone for now. And then all we have to do is come in and clone this element. So now we have our two flex containers side by each in here. Of course, we can then add a new element on the left. We want our navigation and on the right, we can do a text element, but you could also do a button element in here. And inside of the button element, uh, instead of, because we want, we want it to be clear in the background, so you just come into the button element and you would uh, scroll down here. You would probably have to click on override and you're going to say a background. We want that to be transparent. And then the text we want to, let's just make it a dark color here. And so now we have click to sign up. So that would be another way that you could do this. So we're going to come in and we're going to get rid of this new section I just put in because now you see how the structure is laid out. And then let's um, uh, for the let's let's start with the outer flex element right here. So let's click on this and let's see what we have. I put in a hundred top margin just to push it down from the top, just for so I can illustrate this a little bit easier. We got a hundred percent width on there, and then we have a direction of row starting from left to right, justification of centered, and no wrap, and the margin I left alone. And then of course, when you're done, you wanna turn off the border so you don't actually see that on the screen, but I'll leave it on for right now. Then in this left-hand flex element, again, we'll look at the settings in here. And generally speaking, don't ever change anything here in the flex child. It just, it just messes everything up, just leave it alone. And so again, we got our uh, row setting uh, centered and no wrap and basically so nothing's changed in here and I do believe it is the same for this one as well let's see here yep yep okay everything is the same and again remember to turn the border off so then over here on the navigation we don't have to do much in here either you set it up with all your links of course as you want it you set the hamburger bun the way you want it as well and we can come in here we can add in more menu items if we want and you'll see they'll populate over here and don't worry about the fact that it's only taken up half the screen because i'll show you how we fix that in a minute and then um so we want a horizontal the gap i left at 1.5 collapse on mobile that's what we want we want it centered 
And again here you see the settings I have. I'm pretty sure this was what it was set as initially. And then over here for our headline, or if you choose to use a button, you're going to want to do the same thing in here. And we will click on this and we will say, um, <clears throat> so again, I think I left the settings pretty much exactly how they were. I changed the font size a little bit, but you know, you got to make it look like how you want it to look. But then here's the big difference here is in the menu, uh, in the uh, button down here, I'm sorry, in the uh, headline, we're going to come in here, click on advanced. We're going to come down and we want to add a custom attribute. And then um, I'll open that up. And in this case here, I just said data dash title equals menu dash button. So this is our menu button right here. And then you want to save that, of course, and then save your page. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's all the settings you have in here. I'll know in a second as soon as I open up my code. So we're going to go here to settings. We're going to show the code and we're going to come down and click on footer code. And just to get this up higher on the page, I will just open that up. So all we're going to say here is uh, in the here, so make sure you put in your script tag to begin with and then your closing script tag with a little backwards slash right before the word script. And then we're going to say when somebody clicks on that data title of menu button, so the one that we gave the menu button to, we want to do something and that's uh, we're going to have a function run at that point. And then there's one thing I forgot to do inside of the uh, editor itself, so we're going to close this back out here real quick. We're going to come into our navigation element, and I added a, another attribute in there as well. So we go to advanced, we would come down, we would open up, we would add a custom attribute. And then that custom attribute is data-title equals main-nav. So again, you can call these things anything you want. You can make up any custom attribute you want, but this is what matches my code now. And of course, you always want to make sure you save it. So now let's go back into the code and we are going to open this back up again and go to our footer code. So when somebody clicks on the element that has the data title, the data attribute, the custom attribute, all the three things would be accurate to refer to it as, when somebody clicks on that headline element, we are going to do something to the element that we just gave that custom attribute to of data title equals main nav. So we put that into the navigation element. So something's going to happen to this navigation element when we click on that headline element. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go inside of that navigation element and we're going to find another element inside of it, a child element inside of it called div dot modal. So it is a tag of div. So the element is a div with a class of L modal. So that's what we're looking for on the inside. And what we're going to say then is we want to give this now an attribute, just like data title equals main nav is an attribute. We're going to give this L modal class another attribute and that attribute is style. So we're just adding a style attribute to this element. And what we're saying here is display block and make it important. We're adding the important value or tag at the end of it in order to say, okay, we want to make sure that this overrides any other things that say to turn it off because display block shows it to us, whereas other things can turn it off or hides it on the page. And so because it becomes display block, what that does is it actually shows the modal on the screen and the modal is the pop-up that is the navigation. <coughs> so let me show you how that works again. When we come in here and we skinny this down to mobile size, this is going to pop up like this. We're going to click over here on menu. Now you're going to see over here on the left, we get the little pointer finger. On the right, it's not showing up. Now I could put that in there, but because you're doing this on a mobile device, you don't actually see the pointy finger anyway, so you don't really need to do that. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to click on the menu and this is what is known as a modal or a pop-up. And so the modal is going to show onto the screen. And then we just click the X like you normally would to turn the modal back off again. So this is what it looks like. So now let's just go up in here just for the sake of finishing this up. Let's clean this thing up a little bit. So we'll turn this back off. And what we want to do is come over to, well, actually, before we do that, let's come in here, click on this. We want to come down and we want to turn off the border. And then, oops, come on, turn off. Gonna click outside, but maybe sometimes that likes to get a little messy. We'll 
do that. Did it turn it off? Okay. Sometimes you got to click on some other element to get it to kick in. Uh, so now we're going to say we want the right hand flex contain container to only show on mobile. So we're do that only will show on mobile. Let's go back into our desktop view. Now you're going to see you got a big blank space here, and this is only over here on the left hand side. And you're going, whoa, that's not right, uh, because here in a desktop view is like that. If we come over here, it's like that. So you see this here because we, when I loaded up this version of it, that menu was already set to desktop only. So it still goes full width because that's one of the beauties of flex containers is it's going to take out that space. So now we're going to come in here. We're going to come into this element. We're going to remove the border on this one here. That one turned off right away. And we will remove the border on this one as well. And again, those are set to both desktop and to mobile. And we will save this. And then we will reload this page right here. And the boxes should be gone. And the navigation element is directly in the middle. And then if we skinny this up, boom, there we go. We got the uh, hamburger bun with the word menu next to it. We click on it. It opens up the modal and now it closes the modal. So that's how you can do it without having to create multiple elements. That's how you can do it all inside of one flex container. And so if you got any questions, just let me know.